This video discusses an article by Carolyn Liss and Jason Sharman. The article is called Global Corporate Crime Fighters Private Transnational Responses to Piracy and Money Laundering. It appeared in the Review of International Political Economy in 2014. Carolyn Liss is a PhD researcher at the Peace Research Institute in Frankfurt, Germany. She specializes in maritime security. Jason Sharman is the Sir Patrick Sheehy Professor of International Relations in the Department of Politics and International Studies at Cambridge. Sharman's research interests range from the study of international corruption, money laundering and tax havens to the global politics of the early modern world. Now I will proceed with the article. Cross-border crime is not just a battle between states and a new breed of international criminals. It can also be a battle between private corporations and criminals. The article discusses that battle. The rise of such private security corporations takes place in overlapping domains of sovereignty claims of states. Private corporations are increasingly responsible for policing themselves. The battle of transnational criminals and private security corporations sees two kinds of private actors who are both motivated by profit. There is a three-way interaction between three actors. These are the firms that fight the crime, the firms that hire them, and the states who regulate those firms. Private military security companies we call PMSCs. Anti-money laundering companies we call AMLs. They offer military protection services traditionally offered by states. Two phenomena emerge. Overlapping security claims should be taken to mean that states no longer have exclusive rights to decide what happens in many regions, especially seas. States indirectly encouraged the rise of the PMSCs because they cannot sometimes fight crime anymore themselves. These two cases show a new governmentality on a global scale. Governmentality is the method of governing and the method to make new kinds of citizens on their states. However, state security action has not disappeared. We take two cases to show the role of private actors. These are piracy and money laundering. Both sectors have been deeply influenced by new private security corporations, especially for international business. Banks and maritime traders are mostly international in nature. In both cases, the companies work in legal areas which are vague or just not here. This means that their actions cannot be entirely legal or outside the law. AML firms provide software and intelligence services. PMSCs fight piracy by escorting merchant ships or employing armed guards on merchant ships. AML firms are needed because governments force banks to hire them. PMSCs are needed because merchants fear losing profits from being robbed by pirates. In this way, PMSCs arise because of the inaction of the state. AML firms rise because of the action of the state. A big difference between AMLs and PMSCs are that there are only two big major firms in the AML industry while the PMSC industry has many small firms. We will first explain PMSCs on private military security companies and piracy. Most research on private military security companies is done about how they are employed by states to fight in war zones. But most maritime PMSCs are not well researched. Maritime piracy re-emerged between 1999 and 2005 because of pirate attacks in the Malacca Straits. The industry skyrocketed after 2007 when Somali pirates started attacking ships in the Gulf of Aden area. The pirates operate in a large area, 
deploying from smaller boats from larger motherships hundreds of kilometers off the coast. They would hold ships and their crews for ransom when captured. For instance, in November 2008, the new ship, the Sirius Star, worth about $150 million and carrying a cargo of crude oil worth $100 million was taken by pirates. In January 2009, it was released after a ransom of $3 million was paid. The private military security companies then operate very internationally. Crew will board in all kinds of ports and the ship trades under the laws of many countries. The companies are staffed mostly by ex-soldiers. The companies minimize costs by employing people on a case-by-case -case basis and are staffed by a minimum amount of permanent members. They often carry lethal weapons. This is made possible by lack of legal state control. Some countries like the United Kingdom explicitly legalized the carrying of lethal weapons by guards on ships. Now we will explain anti-money laundering firms or AML firms. The practice of money laundering was criminalized from 1986 onwards, largely as part of the war on drugs in the US. The purpose of the practice is to hide criminal money in much larger legitimate flows of money. Banks are then charged with knowing the identity of money. This is the know your customer rule. Public authorities place that responsibility burden on the private sector. AML firms then develop software that most banks and financial institutions use to fight this. The two big firms here are WorldCheck and the Association of Certified Anti-Money Laundering Specialists. We call them ACAMS. They mediate between the general government directions and the day-to-day -day challenges of banks and financial institutions. On the other hand, WorldCheck offers a product with the names of half a million relevant individuals who need watching. The database is regularly updated. WorldCheck recruits from law enforcement. Because of a higher pay, law enforcement suffers from a brain drain to these private firms. ACAMS gives a certification to individuals after they passed a qualifying exam. The courses train them in all kinds of skills needed to recognize and fight money laundering. This is lucrative because a certificate costs $1670. This certificate is so valuable that even experienced FBI officers are more credible once they have that certificate. Now we will discuss the rise of anti-piracy and anti-money laundering firms. Globalization and decreasing state sovereignty plays a big role here. In the Middle Ages, it was often not clear who had authority over which piece of land. This meant states could not really monopolize violence. However, by the year 1900, it was fully clear which state could use violence where. In this way, the modern era sees a return to a practice like in the Middle Ages. Overlapping jurisdiction created new markets for private military companies. The UN Convention of the Law of the Sea, or LOSC, says that the high seas are not in the jurisdiction of coastal states, and that some sea zones have shared jurisdiction. These are the Special Economic Zones, or EEZs. The Law of the Sea further states that ships have the nationality of the flag that the ship is allowed to carry. In terms of trade, sea zones are too big for states to cover. France and the Netherlands do offer navy protection of merchant vessels, but these are exceptions. It is difficult for governments to protect against pirates because laws make it unclear who should prosecute the pirates. 
Is it the state offering protection? Is it the state of the ship? Or is it the government of the pirates? Or is it the government of the coastline? The issue of ship registration complicates the matter. Captains can register their ship under a foreign government. This refers to a flag of convenience. For example, many captains choose to fly the flag of Panama or Liberia. These countries offer a very beneficial tax law and various other laws for captains. However, Panama and Liberia are not willing to protect or help every ship who uses their flag. This means that private military companies can flourish, so that they can bribe or pressure local governments to let them use their weapons and services, in order not to have their weapons confiscated. As to anti-money laundering firms, states here face similar problems of jurisdiction. For example, a Singaporean subsidiary of a French bank may send criminal money in Swiss francs to Hong Kong through an internet service in the United States. In this case, it is completely unclear which government holds responsibility. Another reason why states do not tackle this issue themselves is the cost of doing so. For example, the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking, Banking Corporation has 89 million customers and 300,000 employees spread across 80 countries, processing $60 trillion of transactions per year. This means that they need World Check and ACAMS professionals to function. Similarly to the flags of conveniences, shell companies can change the nationality of the flow of funds to dodge the regulations of a certain state. In summary, private military security companies and anti-money laundering firms emerged because of the impossibility of enforcing state authority in the international markets for anti-money laundering and military ship protection. Finally, we discuss what this means for the relationship between firms and the state and global governmentality. The article argues that greater state sovereignty has also driven greater involvement of private firms. It is not the case that private firms actively oppose the sovereignty of states. This is because states have taken the active decision to let this happen. In the spirit of governmentality of Foucault, we can see how states want to let firms and citizens take over their role in some areas, rather than to rob them of the role of states. States depend on private actors to uphold the laws of the state. The profit that AMLs and PMSCs make necessitate this. These private firms will still work hand in hand with the militaries of the state and the financial legal systems of the state, which will continue to exist and even be strengthened by the private actors. While governments did not initiate the rise of PMSCs, they did respond to them by actively setting up regulations on how PMSCs should act. In this way, they kept their authority over the market. AMLs and PMSCs defend the interests of the state internationally, where the states do not have the power to protect that interest by the state itself. States are thus allowed to cooperate better in a field where overlapping sovereignty would make that otherwise difficult.